नमस्कार सप्त प्रणव टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस न्यू टर्म फॉर मेनी ऑफ यू सप्त प्रणव एज यू नो प्राण लीला उपासना विच इज वन ऑफ द प्राइमरी प्राइमरी साधना पद्धति और प्राइमरी रूटीन्स दैट वी हैव एज पार्ट ऑफ दिस होल कर्मी ऑफ ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी फिट फॉर लाइफ प्रोग्राम इन दिस द वन practice that you are doing every day other than somno magic is pranlila upasana so the pranlila upasana as you also know consists of 18 sections you know 18 steps now i have mentioned all this earlier today i'm going to focus on the 14th step of pranlila upasana which is called sapta pranam now you have already been doing this practice for almost 55 days now today is the 55 number 55 satsang that we are we are in for so you might say that oh why didn't you tell this earlier for 55 days we have been doing this without even understanding what we are doing etc the point is that the method on which we have established this whole process of teaching and learning teaching and learning why because this fit for life program is really a program for teaching and learning mutual teaching and learning it's not essentially something that um that one person is teaching and everyone is learning everyone who's participating is actually in the process of teaching and learning you learn as you do this so you learn by doing and you do by learning all of this together and as you are doing it and as you progress you learn something it is your responsibility to kind of propagate it to others the whole thing is designed in a manner that it will not cause you any harm if you did if you did sapta pranav incorrectly without understanding all its nuances for 55 days no harm just like when you were learning to walk or you were learning to talk your mother tongue there was no harm done to you just when you were trying and failing and not doing it perfectly right so it it's the whole teaching and learning methodology is really based on the same methodology by which we learned to talk and we learned to walk and that that's these are two two things that we have seen in life we all learn and we learn without taking the help of any specific teacher any school any course any program so that is why we have chosen these the methodology behind these two uh these two issues and one is as you see walking is a very kind of motor skill it involves our body and energy whereas whereas the the talking or speaking or learning your mother tongue is a very cognitive skill it's that of the of the manashit or the mind and the consciousness so tan pran manashit physical energetic mental spiritual if you see the more materialistic aspects and the more spiritual aspects psycho spiritual aspects you can see learning a language is more towards the psycho spiritual dimension and learning to walk is more towards the 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 physical energetic dimension and both of in both these dimensions we learn two phenomenal things walking and talking when we are really really young without any major help from anyone else we learn primarily by our own motivation and our own will strong will to learn so we are falling as we are trying to walk we are falling we are trying we are seeing others no one is teaching us no one no one may be holding us we are still trying we are holding on to something else and we are trying to get up on your on our two feet and balance ourselves on our two feet and take those steps and we are falling we are crying we are getting hurt it doesn't matter we still try we don't stop if we get hurt same thing with language if we are speaking we may not may not be speaking perfectly and we see other people are laughing as we but they are not laughing mocking at us they are laughing with joy just because we are trying and succeeding minutely step by step as we say mama baba and all that and so that's the joy of learning in that manner and that's what we want to bring here in this process of teaching and learning and and taking this whole whole parampara or this tradition or this this methodology forward to others that the seva the service that we want to do is to to others is based on the same principles of learning to talk and walk now when we learned to talk and walk we didn't wait for someone to explain everything and then start as we we learned a little bit we saw something we saw others we started doing those things that's the same thing that we do here so you have done you have been engaged in doing this for 55 days that's no problem if you might say that oh i've spent 55 3 hours every day is what we what we demand 
So we're saying three hours every day for 55 days, 165 hours you have spent. That's equivalent to a three credit or a four credit. I don't know how many credit course in your, in your entire semester if you were in a college or school. So it's a long program and I've wasted your time by not explaining how to do Sapta Pranabha. So today is the day that you will learn and hopefully from tomorrow when you are doing Sapta Pranabha, you will be experiencing something different. And as you keep doing this, I hope you will be experiencing more and more. Now, what is Sapta Pranav? It starts with I, I'm Pranav, Sapta Pranav. The Pranav part of it is really refers to Omkar. Now, Om, that's a very popular uh, technique these days. It's been linked to production of nitrous oxide and all that, which is not something that I'm going to talk about today. We will address it on another satsang on another day. The benefits of, of chanting Om or humming, hmm. Omkar or is really nothing but humming. Um, many times when people are singing, even in songs you see it, there is a hum that comes in that's included. The humming of bees as we know. Um, but it's, it's also connected. The, the, the word Om is connected to Hinduism a lot. Now, that's not exactly the way in which we are going to treat it here in Karmio for 21st Century Fit for Life program. Although we have nothing against such symbols and we have every, we really want, really respect such symbolism and we want all of us and to use such symbolisms. There is nothing wrong with that and we are all for it and we want it to be propagated as a symbol of Hinduism. There is no problem and, and not only no problem, we really want that to happen. But the other point is that there is also something more to it that has not been explained. So that's what we, we, we base this on. So A, O and M. That's the three sections in Om. So A, A when you're saying your lips are kind of open in this manner. A. Then when you're saying O, your lips, lip shapes has changed. O. And finally, when you close your lips and try to make any sound, the only sound that you can make with your lips shut is mm, mm, the humming sound. And that's the importance of humming or mm, or omkar. Now omkar, traditionally there is a slight confusion between ong and om. Sometimes it is, it is also used as ong. Some people pronounce it as ong. The lips are still open and it's more of a ga, ga sound, ga, ga than a ma, ma sound. But the fact is that the only, the ma sound is the purer one because that's the only sound that you can make with your lips shut. So we pronounce it as om. Now, whether you want to, the a and the o have been, have been used as symbols of other, other thought processes, other philosophies. You can, you can study that. I'm not going into it today now, but the, it, we are, what all that we are saying is, uh, you need not come to the hmm from a uh, and o oh when you are doing Sapta Pranav as part of Pranlila Upasana. You can come to that through anything. You can just say, come, vam, gum. You can do that, but get to the hmm. Okay. So it's more important is humming and experiencing the vibration of the hmm. When your lips are shut and you're doing mm, you got to feel the vibration where exactly in your body. I'm, I'm not going into the explanations of Kundalini and Chakra and Nadis. All those have been explained in whenever we talk of vibration in different parts of our body. And we, we will come to those and discuss that, those. But on another day, today we are just, just trying to talk about where in our body is this experience really happening. So we try to focus on that part of our body and experience the vibration as we make the sound. Mm. But that's the seventh section. Before we come to mm, we have actually in Sapta Pranav. Sapta means seven. Sapta, the word, the prefix Sapta always means seven in Indian languages or Sanskrit. So there are seven. The seventh one is mm. So there are six sections before that. The first one is really the the sound ga 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 so you can see that there is the, you can make the sound ga by adding a e u a the vowels with it so ga gi go you can you can make all those sounds but that sound you can make only if you have added vowels to it 
Now, what if you were to add the vowel first and reach at the consonant at, at, at the end? So if you were to say, instead of saying ga, if you say, the sound that you make and the vibration that you get, that is the first charan or the first step of sapta pranam. G, dog, if you, the word dog, 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 if you were to extend the g of the last, last sound that you're making, dog, oh, it's a cool dog, oh, such a cute dog, 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 so that's first step. Step number two is the sound ra, 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 Rasputin, so Ra. In, now instead of doing ra or hurra, re, instead of that you are doing r. You add the vowel first and come to the consonant later. R. You can move your lips to really explore lips and tongues, whichever way you want to to explore the different different nuances of the sound ra. Lips, the moment you, you can move your lips, the moment you change your tongue, you will see that, that you have lost the sound. So you keep your tongue in a certain way and make that sound. That's the ra sound. That's number two. Number three is v, 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 victory, victory. So v, your, your teeth are on your lips and you're pushing the air out. So the sound that comes out is so Eve, 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 love, love, so these are the first three, ga, ra and va, and then you come to la, la, just in love as I said, la, li, lo, la, 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 la is used a lot in singing also, in, in music. But here, instead of again adding the vowel at the end, you are adding the vowel first. So you say, Al you can say, Kal Wall Dal. Doesn't matter. You can you can come to the la, but extend the l and feel the vibration. Where is it vibrating? In exactly which section, which part of your body? <laughs> okay. Then from la. La is the fourth one. Now from La you are coming to Z, 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 Z and S, S, Z, S, Z, Z, Who's, Was, or, or, S, So, So, instead of So you are doing O, S, Z, and taking it into the Z sound. Because the S, Sa, Sha, and Z, this is kind of the same family. Kind of the same family, you can kind of go from one to the other. So you that's what you do. And again, feel the vibration. You, you do understand that these vibrations have serious influences on your body. When we are really small children, you would have noticed that they are made to pee by when their parents are trying to help them to pee, the, their parents are making the sounds and you see that the child pees. Why does it happen? Well, there must be some form of vibration, something is connected with the act of peeing that, you know, something opens up and they pee as soon as the parents are doing the sound. This is a very common thing, at least here in India, when children are growing up. So the, the sixth one, or the fifth one, as I said, is zzz. The sixth one is the sound na, na, one. So instead of doing one, you are instead of doing na, you are doing one and continuing the sound na at the end. Okay. So the six, the first six are ga, ra, va, la, za, na, and the seventh one is ma. So these are the seven sounds that you are making. Instead of using the vowels to extend the sound, you are using the vowels first in a short way and extending it with the vibration inside your body and you are doing
so those are the seven sounds that you're making vibrations that you're feeling now the one important thing is many of these things these sounds you will see are symbolically connected with different religions different religions for example as i said in the beginning the hum om is connected with the hinduism similarly allahu akbar is a chant that is made by is in islam allah as you know is is the is their their anyone who's following islam their experience of god of 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 uh, of the divine is through this sound of allah so l is very connected with islam similarly jesus as you see jesus this is very connected with christianity so when you are making these sounds in sapta pranav we would invoke we would want you to invoke all the best that these religions have to offer you can invoke the entire entire richness of each of these religions within you in fact you can become a muslim when you're doing all we can become a christian when you're doing zzz. we can become a buddhist because mm is connected with buddhism because as we know siddhat gautama who who came out of his palace in search of the answer what causes dukkha what causes dukkha dukkha means sorrow what is the cause of sorrow finally after years when he reached when he when he became the buddha under the the banyan tree in in gaya in in india when he became when he achieved what is called buddhahood when he became the buddha then it is said that he understood the 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 real cause for sorrow and and the real path towards happiness as oneness he said that the real cause for sorrow is dwait or tuness separation and the separation when when there is no separation when it's when you experience oneness there is no sorrow you really experience joy in its in its purest form so that's all about buddhism you can see it's connected with one so when you are saying mm you can experience you can become a buddhist and experience all the that Buddh, the buddhist religion has to offer in terms of the integration of the good the true and the beautiful and bring it all in within you and when you are doing um you can become a hindu and bring everything that hinduism and the sanatan dharma and the, and the hinduistic religions different it's it's as you know it's a mixture of so many different religious beliefs you can bring all of them together and when you are seeing ga ra and wa you can connect it with the concept of a guru dev it is called in india where you are really surrendering yourself it's, it's guru dev is nothing but a but a notion of of surrendering samarpan it is called it's not particularly paying heed to this this guru or that guru yes it is but in order to surrender you need an object of surrendering so that's that that's the guru so guru dev dev is is divine so you are when you are being able to surrender to the to the forces of divinity through a life live person you know whoever you can who can believe and it can be different people at different points of time in your life for different aspects of your life there's no problem with that that's what we recommend as part of the karmio for 21st century fit for life program that you really can can surrender to different live human beings who within whom you see divinity being being expressed different qualities of divinity being expressed to different people and you can surrender if you're trying to trying to do computer programming you can surrender to, to the best computer programmer on earth and when you're doing playing soccer you can you can surrender to lionel messi or cristiano ronaldo whoever you want to so that's that's the kind of thing that we are saying guru dev ga ra va so i've tried to explain with a little extra time today the different nuances of the sapta pranav practice that we that is included as part of pran lila upasana the physical aspects how you sit what you do with your breath how you what kind of vibration you generate how exactly you're going to do that what you should feel what you should become what you should see with your mind's eye all that has been explained it's going to be a journey please be certain that just because you have heard this today that from tomorrow you you will be a perfect yogi doing a perfect sapta pranav is not how it's going to happen it's going to take you years lifetimes probably to to keep becoming perfect at it no problem that's what we are all doing we are all at it so that's it for, for today friends sapta pranav you've understood you've understood how to do it what to think what to become 
what kind of noise to make, what kind of sound to make. That's all for today, friends. Take it easy and take care. Namaskar.